the gospel of the Lord. As Father Mars mentioned, today is like Tari Sunday. It is considered a day of relaxation from the Lenten rigors. It is a day of hope with Easter at last within sight. We're wearing rose because it is our favorite color. Right, Father Mars? We are halfway through Lenten season, a time when many of us are using fasting and almsgiving to help us, to remind us of the significance of Lent. Some people are doing charity some of us are praying more. Some of us are watching our figures. Yeah? Are you? Father Mars won't have the opportunity to ask you. It's my turn to ask you. Are you watching your figures? You watch your figures by giving up your favorite food this Lent or any activity. And all of this is to make us more aware of our spiritual lives as we go through Lent. The story of the prodigal son is one of the most beautiful short stories ever told. Do you agree? Because we can relate to it. Even though the title of the story refers to the sun, the message of the story is focused on the loving and forgiving father the prodigal father who welcomes his son when he returns after squandering his wealth and prestige. The prodigal's father enjoyed every moment of his son's return, and it was as if his son had never left him Evidently, the father of the story is a metaphor of God, the merciful and compassionate father who does not keep a record of our past wrongs. He does not reprimand us when we return to him with contrite hearts, nor does he induce guilt into us for the wrong we have done and make us feel miserable about our mistakes? He welcomes us back with unconditional love and forgiveness. And he makes us feel good and important. In the story, the father, who showed no signs of displeasure or disappointment, happily received the prodigal son upon his return. The story of the prodigal son is the story of all of us, you and me, every time we sin by choosing our own will over God's. We act like the prodigal son. 
Think of the many times we fall into sin. St. Paul said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we experience this every day. It is human to fall. We need divine strength to rise from the fall and continue the journey. Every time you are tempted to think you are beyond God's love and forgiveness, think of the story of the prodigal son. The young man in the story had stooped to the lowest level of human dignity by choosing to feed the peas, a job that was considered most shameful according to Jewish custom. His father treated him as if he was his favorite. the prodigal son probably had sleepless nights. It wasn't easy for him to return to his father, whom he had defied by forcibly taking his share of the family's property according to human standards. The prodigal son was a black sheep having disgraced the family by asking for his inheritance while his father is alive, was alive. The son had deliberately wished that his father was dead. This was the cruelest agony he could ever have inflicted on his father. He not only betrayed his father's love and trust, but he also tarnished the family name. These thoughts flooded his mind. And he was now truly sorry for his careless behavior. He struggled to make a choice between going back to his father to seek his forgiveness or continuing to live in misery. It was a difficult decision that required courage and humility. Abandoned by his fair weather friends who had only kept his company as long as he had money in his pocket and had since left him alone with the pigs. The prodigal son's thoughts flashed to his father who loved him dearly. He was able to break away from his pride and ego and walk back to his father. The most difficult thing was to make his decision. Once he made up his mind, the rest became easy. The young man wanted a new freedom, wanted new friends and a free life. He was fed up with the rules and regulations of the family. He wanted to be an independent young man with no accountability. He wanted to be his own master with absolute freedom. He had expected the area 
across the valley to be greener. But when he reached the dream valley, he did not even find grass there. It took him a long time to realize that. Every day, he lived away from his father. He was turning his back from true joy and happiness. In the absence of his father, he was groping in darkness. But the most beautiful part of this story is that the prodigal son was ultimately able to come to his senses and make recompense for his mistakes. Unfortunately, there are many prodigal sons and daughters who are seeking perfect happiness away from their parents. This is happening with the younger generation as they regard the older generation. And it's happening with people of all ages abandoning their father in heaven. As our Father in heaven awaits our return with unconditional love and infinite mercy, we also must patiently wait with open and welcome hearts our loved ones for their return. In all of us, there is a desire for conversion, changes of lives, and attitude. We're often tempted to procrastinate. In some cases, it takes a very long time before we are able to bring about a desired change or conversion. The more we trust in the Lord, the easier our conversion becomes. Conversion is the work of God. All we can do is to be open to his grace. My brothers and sisters, as we go about our time this Lent, let us try to think about the times in which we may have left the Lord for one thing or another. Or times in which may have, we may have deep down put something on a higher level of importance than God. We have an opportunity on April 5, for our parish reconciliation. Come. We will have 10 priests representing the Father. And it's our opportunity to come and reconcile with God. Remember, all it takes is your goodwill to come back to him. He is there with open arms to welcome you, welcome everyone, and make us his beloved son or daughter. What wonderful rejoicing in heaven that will be. Amen.